What you were hoping for is happening. Tonight's guest, a man goes by the name of Philip Brooks, also CM Punk, is here. Yeah! He's here. Yeah! And we have the music of Jake Wesley Rogers. Yeah! He's amazing. Yeah! And we have a great title sponsor, Branson. <laughs> Look at that. Today I'm taking on the world's largest toy museum. Let's go check it out. This does not feel safe to put the ALF display right next to Garfield. <laughs> ALF eats cats. Mondays. Hey, not quite Superman. Want to give me a shoulder rub? Oh, thank you. Oh, it's perfect. That's right, everybody. Bradson. It's within a day's drive. We're gonna have a great time. There are all kinds of great places to stay. Does anyone want some cherries? Just cherries and whipped cream. I hope they have great restaurants in Branson. Thank you, it feels great. Oh, I can just feel those tension spots melt away. Not quite Superman. You know, I bet if you were a real Superman, you wouldn't know how hard to press because you can press through everything. One-on-one, -on -one, rock em, sock em robots. I broke it. Swoop, swoop. Hey, hey, how you guys doing? Should we do things I've noticed? You know what? At the end of the season, this is our season finale. At the end of the season, the, uh, the writers have written all these things I've noticed and they submit them to me and I pick my favorites. And they're like, you didn't pick mine. So at the end of the season, I give them a chance to demonstrate their favorite one that wasn't chosen. It's time for Rejected Things I've Noticed. <laughs> Let's do it. These things I've noticed. These things I've noticed, yeah. Yeah. These things I've noticed. These things I've noticed, yeah. Yeah. These things I've noticed. There you go. All right, first up we have writer Josh Willis. I've noticed that strip malls probably only accept $1 bills. <laughs> All right, that was a good one. I should have used it. Next up we have Kale Harper. Kale. I've noticed that people who steal from kitchens are willing to take whisks. Yep. <clears throat> He's a cute little writer's intern. All right, next up we have Katie Day. Katie. I've noticed that you've reached a new low when you're eating a bean burrito in your car at night and you're pretty sure you're, you're chewing part of the wrapper, but you just kind of go with it. <laughs> All right, that's it, yeah. She stopped. She stopped. Yay! Okay, next up. <laughs> we have Nate Black. Nate. I've noticed I really don't know where baby carrots come from. <laughs> wow. Surprisingly, not in a costume. All right, next up, Sarah Jenkins. I've noticed that when ghosts vaguely remember things, it's called deja vu. Yeah, I should've used that one. Should've used that one, yeah. Okay, next up is Chad Harris. Chad. Um, I've noticed that red box machines are really just trapezoids that accept rectangles in exchange for squares that hold circles. It's a shape joke. Pretty good, pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. And finally, her last night with the show, Gracie Simmons. I've noticed that there is no I in team, but there is an us in cactus. There is. It's just true. That's things I've noticed. These things I've noticed. These things I've noticed. All right. Hey, uh, 
you know, one thing that's important to us here, as you can see, like we have a lot of great love with the writers, with the whole crew. Um, love is important to us here. So I went out on the town to, to try to find uh, love between people and, and celebrate that. Check out this video. Jeff Houghton with the Mystery Hour here on the town asking people questions about friendship, about love, about relationships because my theory is if you really love someone, you know their phone number. So I'm offering people a hundred dollars if they know their loved one's phone numbers. Let's find out. All right, what's your name? I'm Chelsea. And your name? Dylan. And what's your guys' relationship? We're engaged Woo! for a yeah. really long time. You guys are friends? Yes. How long have you been friends? Oh, wow. Oh, uh, like seventh grade? Yeah, like seventh eight, grade? Eight, nine years? Yeah. yeah. That's we'll awesome. That. Seven, eight years now? Yeah, way too long. Since six freshman year, years? Like six years. Oh my gosh. How long have you been married? 12 years. 12 years? 13 years. How long have you guys known each other? Like a year? No, like three. three. So you guys have been married for 13 years. You love each other deeply. I will give you a hundred dollars, Scott, if you can tell me Caroline's phone number. Oh, f this is my number one problem. A hundred dollars, one hundred dollars, one hundred dollars, if you can tell me his phone number, your friend of eight years. Oh, son of a <gasps> Oh, no. Fiance. He's got a hundred dollar bill. Um. You live in Illinois, like. Is it your zip code's 314? Yeah, I don't even know what your zip code would be. 636. <laughs> is that wrong? It's wrong. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know at all, actually. This is a man you're going to marry and spend the rest of your life I with. I know. I'm asking you your fiance's phone number. Do you want me to say it for real? Yes. I know it starts with 573 and it ends with 4150. 417. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I, no. How does this make you feel? I'll, uh, all right, because I don't know his. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I need to know her phone number when my phone does it for me? What? Surely someone's going to know their loved one's phone number. No one has. It's 805. That's not you think his phone number is 805? Yeah, that's, that's three numbers. I don't know it. I don't know my own phone number. I don't have it. Oh. I don't know it. I mean, it's yeah. in my phone, but I don't know it. Do you know his? No. I, I don't know her phone number either. I know it's no, like 816 no something. 314. Yes. 789. No. Oh, my God. Oh, Keeping the slap. money. 417-631. That's it. You win. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. Her number is 417-861. Is that right? Yeah. Oh. Wait, did That's your $100 bill. What the f <laughs> High five. Hell yeah! How do you feel? Yo, this is awesome. It's my birthday, too. That's crazy. You're a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> $100. There he is, love. We'll be back with CM Punk. That comedy bit brought to you by Bush Ramlow and Shore CPAs. Close captioning for the Mystery Hour provided by Paragon Architecture. Big Whiskey's is the official American restaurant and bar of the Mystery Hour. Guest booking provided by Gig Salad. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. Hey. Let's get going. We have a great guest tonight. We also have a great guest sponsor. History Museum on the Square. If you are missing things, they have them. <laughs> it's a horrible rumor to start. Hey, our guest tonight goes by the name Phil Brooks. He also goes by the name CM Punk, one of the best wrestlers of all time, and the Renaissance man who does all kinds of things. You guys are going to love it. Please put your hands together for CM Punk. <laughs> You gotta check, though. Yeah, I live in fear that my fly is constantly down. <laughs> it's a good fear. No. It's a bad fear not. to have. Hey, before we start this, does anybody know what the score of the Sharks-Blues game is? 
<laughs> You're a big hockey fan. Woo. I'm a huge hockey fan. <laughs> Are the Sharks your team? No. No. <laughs> no, not at all. My team didn't even make the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. We got cups. It's five to three. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. So <laughs> when you came out, I was like, here's a man who knows how to make an entrance. Of course you do. You have all kinds of experience walking into places being like, it starts now. I guess, I guess yeah, I guess. I, I would just try not to fall, really. Right. Uh, honestly. You did it. You did it without falling. Well, there's still the return trip. Yeah. <laughs> but I would say you have athletic ability. It's debatable. I've been told that I am not an athlete. I've also done some stupid athletic things in my life. So uh, who's to say, you know? But I think it's interesting. You, you, you um, have done all these athletic things. But like in, in high school, you weren't doing those things. Is that right? No. In high school, I was, I was actually the, like the, the opposite of what a jock would be. I yeah. tried out for the wrestling team. I tried out for the football team. And I had made the team, but I was told, um, among other things, that I would have to cut my hair. And uh, I was way more interested in being the opinionated punk rock kid than being a wrestler or a football player. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I think it turned out okay. I, I, did, I did well. I did all right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it'd be better to be who you are than to have been a, you know what, yeah, I was a high school football star. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I don't think there were high school football stars in my high school. I don't think. <laughs> I, I think they might have a good football team now, but back yeah. then, back absolutely. Back then, no. No, no, not so much. So then how do you get from, get from that to, um, to the wrestling you did do before WWE to then into WWE? Uh, well, I saw it on television. Yeah. It's, it's a boring story. I saw it on television. Give me the short version of it. Then. I, I saw it on television and I said, wow, I want to do that. Everybody who's on television must be a billionaire and that sounds cool. So I went and I did it. Yeah. This. <laughs> that's a very short version. Yeah. There's a, there's, a, there's a lot in between there, but that's the gist of it. The gist of it is kids follow your dreams. You see something you yes, like. Yes, absolutely. Not just kids, good. everybody. I don't care how, I, if you're 45, if you're uh, 31 like me. Uh, <laughs> You know, whatever it is, whatever it is you want to do, I think yeah. you should you should just do it. Especially awesome. now, 2019, it doesn't kind of matter. Everybody's got a, a movie making machine in their pocket. You can right. you can do stuff with your friends, and as long as you're having fun and not hurting anybody, more power to you. Right, and like you've all you've reinvented yourself all the time, and, not, and like one of the things you love to do now is write comic books. You just yeah. kind of said, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, um, it, it's not so much that I say that I can do that, it's somebody else asks me if I want to do that, and my answer is always yes. Yeah. So that, that it's, it's got me in a lot of trouble in my life, and it's, um, it's been very beneficial in my life, too. So I don't know, I still, it's like middle of the road, I don't know if it's a good attitude to have, you just kind of be like, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> well, speaking of attitudes, you still, you've always kind of carried with you that sort of punk rock attitude, yes. and I think that that's something people loved about you in your wrestling career, like kind of speaking truth to power and being like, I don't care about all this, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, people seem to like that. And that was, I mean, literally, I just said it to somebody backstage, uh, I said I'm perpetually 15 years old. 15 was like the age that just, I don't know, everything just seemed to kind of click, like my yeah. age of reason almost, where I just like looked around and I was just like, man, yeah, you just gotta have fun with yeah. whatever you're doing, because if you're not, what's the point? And there's this big moment for you in your wrestling career, like with the pipe bomb, you're, you're sitting and you get to just go on a rant. And yep. the wrestling fans, they kind of know it. The other fans, like you are, you're just kind of uh, poking pretty hard at the powers that be in the WWE. And people yeah. love you for it. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I, I guess I got to embody what everybody wants to do. And it's kind of like, you know, tell your boss what you think without any repercussions. I was legitimately, at the end of my contract uh, at the time, I think it was 2011, and I was leaving, and they were befuddled. Why, would, why are you leaving? Oh, it's, this is such a great place to work. And I was just like, I'm, I'm tired, I'm done. You know, I, I, I saw a light at the end of the tunnel and I was gonna take it. And uh, I wound up cutting that promo and talking myself into re-signing for like another three years because at that time, just within that six minutes or whatever it was, uh -huh. I had become the biggest star in wrestling Yeah. without even really thinking about it. Because I was like a very peace out, I'll see you later. 
I'm yeah. out of here kind of thing. And it just, overnight, I became the man, I guess you would say. <laughs> and I don't I, even like saying that. I don't like talking about myself, yeah, especially right. if it's positive. If it's negative, I can say all kinds of awful things about myself. <laughs> What's your biggest life regret? I'm just kidding. Uh, you, you'll start saying if I give you too much of a chance. Yeah, yeah, I'll get, I'll get in a lot of trouble with my wife when I go home. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of your wife, your wife's a writer. Yeah, my wife's a badass. Yeah. yeah. You guys must be the coolest. Yeah, you can clap for that. Yeah. <laughs> you guys must be like the coolest power couple. Yeah, yeah, I'll let you. Yeah, we'll ride that way. Sure, yeah. sure. <laughs> sure. So, uh, so... I don't know what your answer to this or how you, how you like to answer this question, but I think it's probably true. Since you left wrestling, there's always rumors you're going to be coming back. Yeah. And like recently, it's kind of heated up again. Uh -huh. What do you say, what's your answer for those rumors? <laughs> well. <laughs> So there's, there's a lot there. Yeah. There's, you know, <laughs> and I, I've gone through the, the, the gamut of, you know, oh, he hates his fans. It's, you know, this and this. I, I think I'm the nicest guy in the world. If you treat me with respect, I will, you know, reciprocate it in kind. But the, wrestling to me after a while became a job. And it became a job that uh, it, didn't, it didn't serve me in any way, shape, or form. I didn't care about the money. I got zero joy from it. And I wasn't happy. And I wasn't happy for a very long time. And I realized that I was making everybody around me unhappy. Yeah. And I was very sick and very hurt. And it was a, it was a bad situation, not only for myself and my family, but like I'm sure, looking at it now five years later, I'm sure on the other side of it, there was people who were always like, here comes that guy, you know, yeah. like, you know, so it, it was a bad situation and I needed to get out. And I, I think if anything doesn't serve you anymore, I, I think you need to get out. Yeah. It was, it was a bad relationship and I got out. And since I've gotten out, I've grown as a person. I'm happy now. I've gotten to do things. And yes, because of wrestling, I've been able to write comic books and uh, star in movies one of which is coming out. Actually, both of them are coming out in October. Uh, and I have just got, I, you know, wrestling has treated me very, very well. Um, but for a long time, it didn't. So I'm proud of those years. I'm very yeah. happy that I have fans who remember me and love me that much. Uh, and... You're one of the greats. See, I don't, I don't know about that. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I love you, too. <laughs> Look at this. I, I came out here and I was disparaging the St. Louis Blues, and you guys just can't hate me. I don't understand. I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing my, I'm doing my job all wrong. Do everything I can. Well, uh, we appreciate you making the trip out here. I gotta tell you, I'm happy to be. Like seriously, this this show and everything about it is awesome. Thanks. Um, This, this theater is beautiful, these people are beautiful, you're beautiful, the hair is... <laughs> but I, I, love the spirit, I love the spirit of the whole thing. This is very yeah. punk rock, so this is, uh, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll come back if you ever invite Please me. Please do, yeah. there he is. CM Punk, we'll be back. Travel and accommodations provided by Hotel Vandervoort. Systematic Savings Bank, official bank of the mystery hour. The Mystery Hour is brought to you in part by Ozarks Technical Community College. You have a dream, we have a plan. Tonight's musical guest brought to you by Bear Village. Welcome back, everybody. We have a great musical guest. He's been on a couple times before, and he gets, uh, he's just amazing. <laughs> Please put your hands together for Jake Wesley Rogers. I grew 
Wesley Rogers, thanks to CM Punk. 10% of our box office proceeds goes to the Rainbow Network. We'll see you guys next week. Let me see you.